Welcome, beautiful people. Thanks for tuning in to another Get Fit and Pole Online Congress 2021 interview. Today, with the gorgeous Heidi Coker. Heidi started pole dance in 2009. Already one year later, she started to compete. Heidi won many, many titles, medals, awards. And one of the major ones would be the ultimate champion of IPC, International Pole Dance Championships, in 2018. Apart from those achievements, Heidi is coaching people not only in their pole practice, mm -hmm. but helps them with their mental and emotional state to overcome limiting beliefs and programming. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. I'm super grateful. Welcome, Heidi. So good to see you. Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you already in our first interview one year ago, how did you start Poland? And I remember it was a heels class, actually, right? So mm -hmm. how did all that started? Yeah, so I saw Sheila Kelly on Oprah and mm. she was doing a little like strip tease and talking about sexual empowerment and femininity and being in shape. And I was like, that's what I want. So <laughs> yes. I went and had my heels and actually used heels for a while and progressed through many other stages, but mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you first bought the heels and then went to the studio? No, actually. I went to the studio and then was like, oh, I need booty shorts. I need heels. Like it was a very um, mm -hmm. sexy studio. So mm -hmm. yeah, I started with just regular workout attire and then mm -hmm. got into like the sexiness for a while. Uh, yeah. yeah, sounds awesome. When you did start, you had some movement background, right? Mm -hmm. Or? Yeah. Yes. Correct. I was a gymnast for about 15 years. Um, mm -hmm. So from the time I was like five or so all the way until I was 21 and did mm -hmm. uh, very elite level competitions. And so I do have a background. Yeah. That's yeah. like, you did that quite for quite a while, the, the yeah, gymnastics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15, 15 years. And then even after that, I did some break dancing um, and some yoga and so, but lots of, yeah, I grew up in athletics, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What motivates you in your practice? Ah, well, currently I think it's changed. My motivation used to be mm -hmm. about, um, like preparing for competitions and performances, but now that we're in a different world and I'm a different person, um, what motivates me now is just moving my body for um, creative expression and just to move. And it's like another form of my self-expression. Mm -hmm. So that's my motivation. So if it feels good to pull, I do it, but it's not mm -hmm. for a specific outcome anymore. So... Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. I can imagine like being a gymnast and doing competitions that this mm -hmm. kind of like transfer to pole first and then growing into something else. Totally. Yeah. 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 In athletics, you, you have an end goal in mind, you know, getting that trick and then performing it and having the routine. And so my first 10 years basically was very much focused on uh, performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether like performing for people or for judges. And so, yeah. 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 If you do your own practice, do you plan your sessions still? Like, are you like, okay, today I want to focus on a particular thing or is it like totally like, okay, I have this one hour. Let's see what I do. Exactly. It's very free form. It might be, um, Ooh, I want to try something like mm -hmm. if I have something in mind, um, and then depending on how that goes, it just goes into another, you know, avenue. And, and honestly, mm -hmm. these days after I work with a client, cause I do a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, um, mm -hmm. instruction, it's usually afterwards I'm in, inspired by my client and I'm like, I want to try that. And so, or I have an idea of like, oh, we worked on this thing. Mm -hmm. I want to take it to the next level. And so I'll often will pull after I work with a client and it's the inspiration of working with them. And 
my workouts are actually quite short these days, usually 20, 30 minutes and that's it. Like it's completely different these days. Yeah. If there's one advice you would give somebody doing pole, what would that be? Mm. Oh, that's so hard because I think I would like to tell them many things. Um, I wouldn't, I would say enjoy the journey because just like life, it, your pole practice doesn't stay the same. It transforms and evolves and grows just like we do because we change. So therefore our pole practice changes. That's just, it's a fact. So I would say enjoy the journey wherever it takes you and don't limit yourself to just one, one particular aspect of it. Like be athletic and sporty and be sexy and have fun and use mindfulness and don't let this thing up here get in the way. Just enjoy your failing and your efforts and your successes and let it be a journey. Mm -hmm. What would be other hobbies apart from movement practice? Hmm. I love to garden. So yes, I love to garden and right now it's spring in Atlanta. So everything is blooming and amazing. So working outside in the garden, I love to cook. So cooking and baking all the time. Um, you do have sometimes recipes in your newsletter, right? Yes, yes, mm. I often share her, yes, recipes in my newsletter. And hmm, other hobbies. Yeah, I basically cook and garden. Yeah, and, I mean, that's already a lot. Like, yeah. And then there's pole, right? And then there's pole, exactly, exactly, yes. Would you be more a morning person, an, an early bird or, yeah? Yes. I'm definitely an early bird. Um, yeah, definitely. I like being up early, especially like before the world awakens. And yeah. so definitely a morning person, not necessarily for training. I like to train a little bit later, although mm -hmm. I have a, a 7.30 in the morning private. So I do pull kind of early, but um, yeah, I am an early riser. Yeah. What would be the ideal morning for you then? If nothing so, is planned and you could just do what you love doing. Perfect. I would wake up early with the birds. So still like dark and wake up first thing, um, meditate, come downstairs, um, make a cup of coffee or tea and watch the sunrise, uh, go for a walk um, in the neighborhood and maybe read after that, sit outside in the garden, have some breakfast. That would be amazing. <laughs> That's my morning right there. I'll, I'll come back. Okay, from now on, that should be <laughs> your morning every day. I know. Right? I hope bits, bits and pieces of that I do every yes, morning, yes. But, but I'll work on the whole container. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about breakfast, what mm -hmm your yummy food like what do you crave what's your favorite food what's your favorite drink yeah so well i do love a cup of coffee um mm -hmm. and sometimes that's tea so like i will take a break from coffee and have tea okay. um you consciously love... decide yes yeah yeah okay. yeah depending on what activities are going on in my life um sometimes i take caffeine out so if i'm taking mm -hmm. caffeine out then i will have tea um i love having avocado toast so I have my avocado here. Um, and actually I love this German bread and um, I should have brought the German bread, but either way, it's this really thin, very hearty, it's made out of rye. So I love avocado toast in the morning and I love a banana with homemade almond butter, which I just got home from Costa Rica. So I don't have any almond butter to show you, but I have my almonds cause I will make Enough. it later. <laughs> And on occasion, I love to have whipped honey. Oh. So instead of it being like honey that you pour, it's mm -hmm. 
whipped and thick. Mm. Yeah. So the thick honey. Yeah. Yeah. The avocados weren't ripe this morning. So I had honey toast this morning. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, and I do have a tea that I like. So it's a mushroom tea. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no caffeine, just herbal with mushroom tea. Yippee. Reishi. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Reishi are the mushrooms, right? That's correct. Ah, always yes. learning. <laughs> What's your favorite item of clothes or what do you love wearing in general? Um, well, I love wearing harem pants and I do actually have them on today. So here we go, the big pants. And I love them to pole dance in as well. So ah. I will pull them um, because I can take the bottom and pull it up like this. Mm -hmm. And so then I have like a dress mm -hmm. and I can actually like dance in them and the pants get flowy. And um, so I wear them in life and in pole. Um, and I love my pole leggings. So that way when it's cold, I can just throw on my pole leggings that have grip. Um, and I love those. <laughs> yep. Those are my favorite. Yep. Favorites. Okay. Yep. How is pole... What did pole change you as a person? Ooh, wow. Hmm. How did pole change me as a person? That's a because we went from one way saying, I change as a person. So then does my pole practice changes? So now we are coming kind of like from the other side, like through pole. Okay. What did that do? So, so did my pole, has my pole practice changed me or has my yes. pole practice or have I changed my pole practice? No, you, if pole changed you as a person, if your pole dance practice changed you. Oh gosh, that's really hard to answer. because it's like so entwined to me. Um, yes, I would say it has. Pole has taught me how to, um, uh, ah, it's so intertwined. Um, ha, yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, yeah, no, no, no. I, I was like, I just sit back, relax. Cause I know from the last interview, usually when Heidi starts like, Hmm, that's a tough one. That's intertwined. Like uh, you come up with such a nice flow afterwards. And, and I'm always like, just want to hear you talk. I don't need to ask any more questions. <laughs> well, so I guess Paul has changed me because it's taught me to accept who I am. So that it doesn't, I am not defined by one aspect of myself. So where in the beginning I identified as the athlete you know, Paul then taught me, well, yes, that is one aspect of you, but there's also this other aspect where you can be the artist. And so Paul showed me that I can be expressive of myself and it showed me that I can be sensual and accept my sensuality and my sexuality. Paul taught me that I can experiment and that I can research who I am, um, that, it's, that it's okay. In fact, it's wonderful to experiment and explore um and then paul taught me to listen to my body which i feel like is something we as athletes think we listen to our body but i don't think we do actually i think we have a disconnect i think we have a disconnect between i can do amazing things with my body and manipulate my body versus i'm in tune with me and and myself in my embodiment, um, if that makes sense. So totally. Paul taught me to listen to me through my body um, because I could master my body, but I wasn't listening. So it taught me how to listen. It also taught me that everything is a mindfulness practice. It's not just about sitting and meditating that life is a mindfulness practice and so is pole. And it showed me how to incorporate my mindfulness with the pole um, and meditation and mindfulness. And 
It also told me, taught me, that it's okay to take a break. So you can allow yourself. It there were like, okay, for an example, over the summer, I was like, oh, I need to do all these things and create programs and blah, 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 blah. And I came home from a, a trip up where I was off the grid for a week. And I went to pole dance and this energy, when I was literally about to touch the pole said, don't you dare. You are not coming back to me until you're ready. And so it taught me that sometimes we need to take a break and we don't have to always force things that sometimes there needs to be a little bit of separation because there is growth happening that we need to integrate before we can go to the next elevation of who we are in our practice. So, um, Paul has been my partner since uh, a very long time. And so I would say that's, that's, that's what it taught me. That's exactly what I meant <laughs> when I said like, <laughs> just sit back, relax. I love you explaining about having that one week break and then coming back and like, no, 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 wait a second. Um, would you say like, if we take a break that this helps us to disconnect and like to kind of like cut our continuously the same thought pattern we have mm -hmm. to then start over and have new thoughts and new experiences and like break the pattern kind of like? Yeah, totally. I mean, sometimes we need a physical break because we've pushed the body too hard. And again, because we were disconnected, we we physically need a break. Sometimes we mentally need a break because we are stuck in that pattern, in that loop, um, in a behavior that no longer serves us. So sometimes it's not just the physical, sometimes the mental is what we need. And sometimes it's both. But I would also say emotionally and even spiritually, sometimes we need a break because our relationship to it, and, our, the, and which is a reflection of ourselves, like our, the relationship to ourselves, yeah, is out of alignment. And so I think we can take a break for many reasons. And sometimes for me, it was the whole thing. Everything needed to change. And so I needed a complete separation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, taking a break is really important. Now, taking a break could be a day, a week, a month, a couple months, like that is sort of relative to your practice and where you are. Um, but I think we have this misconception that if we take a break, we're going to lose everything or we're going to lose our conditioning yes. or not be able to like do all the things. And we have this me this fear of missing out, like, but look at what everyone's doing on Instagram and uh, people will yeah. forget about me. And, uh. <laughs> and, but the break is actually what we need to catapult us into that next level. And so it, it's healthy to take a break, but we're scared of taking a break, which we're scared of in life too. But yeah, yeah, I absolutely love that. And I think social media sometimes helps and motivates you with many things, but then this taking a break. And I can imagine like if like some of the posters would have some sort of schedule, Hey, I, I want to post this. I want to inspire people and then have that as something I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And then it gets maybe mentally sometimes harder to take that break as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have this fear of like, I can't take, you know, any time off. Yeah. Because, oh, I'm like, going to lose. Like, oh. Exactly. And then, and then actually it's like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. And once you're in it, right? Like it's, oh. yeah. Yes. I get chills again. Awesome. Exactly. Anytime, anytime I have a talk of Heidi, like I get chills. I love that. Um, Heidi, how can people reach out to you? What do you offer? How can they work with you? I would love you to tell a little bit about the pole life coaching as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I do a few different things. Mm -hmm. um, I do pole coaching. So just pole tricks, you know, um, I'll say standard pole workout, the physical aspect of pole. Um, I also do life coaching. So no pole, just 
life coaching, working on our connection to ourselves and our life. And then I do the two together. So I call it pole life coaching. Um, so my experience as a gymnast and even as a pole dancer was that I could do the physical, but mentally I was stopping myself in so many ways. So in pole life coaching, we work on um, how to be more present in our bodies, how to be more mindful. We work on the pattern and the conditioning of the mind and how we approach ourselves and our pole practice. So it's looking at not just the physicality, but those other dimensions, um, which can be the mental, the emotional, even the spiritual, because, um, and that's not to say that you need to have a belief in God or anything like that. It's, it is the spirit of who we are and who we bring to our practice. So um, I work in all three of those areas um, that includes creativity, um, pole conditioning and body awareness. And yeah, I do a little bit of everything. And um, they can reach out to me on uh, Instagram at Heidi Coker on uh, Facebook, Heidi Coker. Yeah, yeah, we put all the links under the video. So yeah. guys, feel free to reach out. At the Get Fit and Pole Online Congress 2021, Heidi did some amazing tutorials. Like one is a talk about mindfulness in general, uh, how that can translate to your pro practice. And actually, I'd say level it up. <laughs> and then a meditation, a mindful meditation, and then a mindful pole practice. So you get to experience how does it feel to not be focused on just the trick but like being present in your body so make sure you watch that it is in our program as well and thank you Heidi so much it's always so inspiring and was such a pleasure to have you sending so much love bye guys thank you bye. for watching <laughs>